Hey guys, I got a new video for you today, and this is going to be on another Boker knife that I just picked up, and this is going to be the Boker Plus Elegance Resurrection, and this is actually the second generation. Now, I don't know exactly what the main difference is between the first generation and the second generation are, but this is just the one that was available. I had actually been uh, eyeing this knife for a while. It was at uh, a local gun store that carried a couple knives uh about six months ago and i had it in my hand and i you know i thought twice about getting it you know it's a pretty big knife at the time i was kind of edc a more um sleek mainstream knife so i passed on it but um you know i was at my local gun shop again and i uh they had the knife available held it in my hand again and you know just uh you know, I, I figured, you know, I might as well pick it up. You know, I've been wanting it for a while, so I went ahead and did that. Now, this one comes in just your standard um, Boker box. Open it up. You get the knife inside. Uh, get your registration card. And then, just like the, uh, the whale knife that I reviewed prior to this one, you do get the Allen key in case you want to take off the thumb studs. Uh, if you were to live in a country or... Uh, in a state uh, that has more stricter laws where you have to have a, a knife that you need two hands to open with. So you can take that off and do that. So always really cool. Put this away and we'll get to the knife itself. Now, if you guys haven't seen any reviews on this particular knife, it's been out for a little bit. But it's, um, you know, it's fairly deceiving. It's got a nice uh, compact look to it, but it's a very, very big knife. And I've been um, kind of like on a big knife kick lately. Uh, you know, uh, obviously a knife nut, you pick up whatever it is that you're looking at. But um, this particular knife, like I said, it's it's a big knife. It's a heavy knife. comes in at 7.9 ounces. So definitely this is a big, beefy knife, as you guys can see. It's going to definitely, you'll, you will feel it in your pocket as far as the weight and the size and all that. But again, this is something uh, if you want to carry a big stout blade, uh, you know, make an impact when you pull it out and, and cut something, this is definitely the knife for you. Obviously, the handles are uh, a nice grippy G10, and this particular one has the um, the, the designer's initials, which is Jim Burke, uh, kind of put into the the handle there. I don't know how I feel about that. You know, obviously, normally you would see it on the blade. This one does not have it on the blade. It's got it on the handle. But again, you know, it is what it is. The um, it it gives you really good traction. You know, it's not it's not overly grippy, but it's grippy enough to where um, a knife of this particular size is not gonna you know fall out of your hand if you were to put it into some big heavy use. Because again, it's a big knife, heavy knife, so you know you you don't. You don't have to be afraid about you know putting it through the paces. It'll definitely handle whatever you you throw at it. Uh, it also has a big, nice, beefy pocket clip. Uh, it is uh, rather large, but it goes in and out of the pants very smoothly because of the uh, of the way that the pocket clip is designed. You do get tip up or tip down carry, but only right handed. It does come set up for tip up carry, and as, if you guys see there, the other hole where the pocket clip would be recessed into it's actually covered by this plate now, i thought that was really cool you know you don't have a, a big uh, big hole exposed um but the only drawback is the actual area where that would be is also the area where you would have the pivot screw so if you do need to um, adjust any type of pivoting or anything like that on the knife itself you would have to remove that or if you decide to go tip down and put the pocket clip on that side to go ahead and adjust the pivot screw, you'd have to take the pocket clip off. So, you know, it's uh, it's got pros and cons. You do have a uh, pretty sizable lanyard hole, which will fit ungutted 550 paracord, which is always nice. And again, in a knife this size, because the handle is so uh, so large, that would probably be more of a decorative lanyard that you would throw on there because you really don't need it as far as grip or anything like that and like i said to pull it out of your pocket it slides it slides out really nicely you do get a lot of the knife showing that's one thing i did edc this knife yesterday and i was wearing cargo shorts and a lot of the knife would come out of the shorts so luckily my shirt would cover up the knife you know in case uh, i wanted to conceal it for some reason but for the most part it makes it easy to grab because you do have about an inch of the knife actually sticking out of the pocket so that's always something to keep in mind uh, you do also have this aluminum backspacer which is uh, supposed to to be there to uh, optimize the balance of the knife it gives it a nice look to it you know it's obviously it sets off the black with the uh, aluminum aluminum color and then it almost finishes off in this uh this kind of small 
um, little area that pops off from the from the bottom of the knife. Uh, you you can use that as an impact device. So if you wanted to uh, to go ahead and uh, as a you know maybe a, a blunt tip to uh, to defend yourself. Uh, I'm not sure how it would do to you know try and break glass with it because it is rounded. It's not very pointy. But for the most part, it sticks out just enough to be able to be used, but not enough to you know to come into contact with the hand or to bother you know the use of the knife itself. So that's always definitely nice. Go ahead and open it up. You do have the ambidextrous thumb studs, and as you guys can see there, it's a pretty stout blade. Really nice recurve and belly on there, and you get that swedge on the top, which actually helps with the uh, penetration on there. Uh, Boker Plus logo on one side, and then uh, 440 seat on the other, as you guys see there. So obviously pretty good steel. Um, again, the uh, the weight of this knife. Here it is in my hand, as you guys can see. But it's it's the main, the key thing that you will find that it is a pretty stout knife. But you know, because of the of how how wide the blade is, you're definitely not going to hurt this knife to uh, to use it from anything to opening up boxes to, you know, maybe uh, you know harder use. You do have jimping on the top, which is uh, grippy enough. You know, your thumb does lock in there, but you know your hand isn't going to go anywhere. This is also a liner lock knife. So as you guys can see there, there is some uh, ridges on the liner lock itself. So it does catch your thumb if you do have to uh, disengage it or when you have to disengage it, let's just say. Uh, there is no cutout. So you actually physically have to stick your thumb in there to be able to, to, in, to disengage it. But it disengages very nicely and the lockup is tight. No blade play whatsoever, up, down, left, and right. And then you disengage and closes smoothly it also opens up very smoothly and as you guys heard there you know locks up very nice very nicely the blade is actually three and three fourth inches so you do have um, a pretty good edc length blade there again for whatever it is that you would have to uh, have to use it for and uh, overall it's nine inches so it like i said it's a it's a nice stout wide heavy knife um, so, you know, this is definitely something, uh, to think of, uh, if you want to maybe throw it into a pack as a secondary, um, EDC knife, maybe an alternative to not having a fixed blade, you know, if you want something big, but, uh, you know, that has the feel of a fixed blade, but not a fixed blade, this would, you know, so somewhat fit that bill. Again, it just depends on what you would need it for. So I always try and come and bring in another knife by way of comparison as far as size goes. So in this case, I'm going to bring in uh, this one right here, another Boker Plus. And this is the uh, S2 from Sniper Blade, Works, or Sniper Blade Works collaboration. Sorry about that. And obviously, um, blade-wise, they're very similar. The main difference is, as you guys can see, is the size of the handle. This handle is a lot more um, sleek, tapered off, versus this handle is wider, uh, kind of fits the blade a little more. Uh, obviously, this you know has a particular design to it because this is more of a worn cliff blade. Um, you don't want so much of the handle sticking down for when you cut. So obviously, this you guys see there, you know the the key points between the two is is that you know big blade, but this one has a smaller handle. Side by side on the blade, as you guys can see there. All right. Now, because uh, these two knives aren't ones that you would readily see all around, I opted to bring in another knife as far as for comparison, something that a lot more people are familiar with, and that's the Spyderco Tenacious. And basically, this is so you guys can see uh, reference on the size of the knife itself. So, blade wise, as you guys see there, obviously it's a lot longer. Handle-wise, it's a lot longer, so you guys get a feel for the size of the knife itself. Um, and also the thickness of the blade, as you guys can see there. Uh, the Tenacious has a pretty thick blade, or wide blade, I should say, um, you know, for, for an everyday usage knife. And then there's the, um, the Resurrection. It's got, obviously, you know, you can see how much wider that blade is. Right, here we go, uh, side by side, so you guys can see the thickness of the blade. And then the thickness of the actual um, handle with the uh, with the liners and the scales and everything on there. So again, you know, this is uh, it's not a knife for somebody that's looking for a light EDC carry knife. This is you know a heavy workhorse knife. Um, it's it's a good transition from you know something medium size to large size, but maybe you don't want to jump up to uh, the price point of maybe a ZT. This would be a good alternative to that definitely comes in um, a lot lower price point than that is I'm not going to quote the price because obviously in this particular model it's dependent on where you go to but I would say anywhere um, 
anywhere from 50 to 70 you know just uh, to be on the safe side uh, you can pick one of these up so obviously you guys can see that you know if you're looking for you know a heavier duty knife um, you know this would probably be fit that bill uh, maybe as a starter for for you know transitioning into those type of knives so there you go this is the uh, Boker Plus uh, Resurrection Elegance Gen 2 and let me know if you guys have any questions thanks